type yes and yes. We're gonna get started just in a few minutes. I am gonna start on time today. I usually don't, but I'm going to today. Yes and yes, awesome. Yes and yes. Good, sounds like you can see me and hear me. Okay, let me know in the chat where you're from and which exam you are start, you're going to start on. So this, this call is going to be primarily about exam P and FM. So if you're going to start with one of those exams or you're writing one of those exams soon, let me know in the chat and where you're from. I'm from Canada, so I like to see if there's anyone else from Canada in here too. Craig is from Pittsburgh, awesome. Noah is also from Pittsburgh, studying for FM. Tatiana is from Texas and preparing for exam P. Dan's from New York and preparing for exam P. Awesome. Okay. So I will say this a few times, or one other time, once there's a few more people in here, it's not quite seven, but if you want to ask questions during this uh, training, there's a Q&A button that you can use right below the video. It says Q&A, and that's where you can ask your questions. I probably won't be keeping an eye on the chat very much just because it's difficult to keep track of which ones are questions and which ones are people just chatting in there to each other. So if you have questions during today's training, make sure you ask them in the Q&A section. We've got Rachel from Blaine, Minnesota. I'm guessing that's what MN is. I'm in Canada, since we don't use the state shortcuts very often, I don't know, Minnesota, I'm guessing. <laughs> Exam P, yeah, so we don't, I don't really know for sure if that's Minnesota, but I think so. Um, okay. So if you're just joining us, let us know in the chat where you're from and which exam you're planning to start with, or maybe you're already um, starting to prepare for one of your exams, let us know which exam that is. There's a little bit of a delay between uh, when I say things, when you hear them, and then when I see the chat in the chat. So just keep that in mind. We have uh, Didi from Minnesota. Hey, and Erica's from Toronto, first person from Canada so far, awesome. I'm in Canada too, Erica, right near Toronto. Um, and she's taking exam P soon. Okay, it's seven now, so I am gonna get started. I'm gonna try really, really, really hard to keep this to no more than an hour and 15 minutes today. So by 8.15, we will be done, I promise this time. <laughs> Last time I did one, Last time I did a training, we went almost like an hour and 45 minutes. So I don't want to do that again. We're going to keep it short and helpful and beneficial for you guys, but you don't, we don't need to go for that long. So, okay. We have Christina from North Carolina, but lives in Virginia, planning to take exam FM. Awesome. We've got a lot of you taking exam P and FM on this call. It's not just one or the other. Okay. So... Today's training is primarily going to be about how to pass actuarial exams. So we're going to talk about the three things that people, like the three causes that typically cause people to fail their exam, and then how you can reverse those to make sure that you don't fall into any of those traps, and that will result in you having the best chance of passing your exam. Okay, so... Like I said a little bit earlier, if you have questions today, make sure to ask them in the Q&A section. There's a button right below the video that you can click on that says Q&A, and that's where I'll be looking for questions. Please try to keep your questions related to the topics that I'm talking about, because those are the ones that I'm going to be looking for, and those are the ones that I'm going to answer. So please make sure your questions are related to the topics that we are talking about today. 
And yeah, so I will get into this. For those of you that don't know me, just, just a quick summary. I am Bria and I am an associate of the Society of Actuaries, which means that I've passed exam P and FM and a bunch of other exams and done a bunch of other online courses and stuff that you need to take in order to become an associate of the Society of Actuaries. Um, so before I was fully like an act, before I was an associate, I went to the University of Waterloo and studied and majored in actuarial science there. And in my program, I was able to participate in co-op positions, which are very much like internships, except the school kind of helps you get uh, the co-op positions. They, at, at the University of Waterloo anyway, they have a whole bunch of employers that would like to hire students. So they actually post jobs directly on the school website. So it, they kind of help in that way by getting employers that are interested in um, hiring students. But then you still have to go through the whole interview process. And it's pretty competitive because there are a lot of actuarial science majors um, but there's still not a ton of actuarial positions. So it's fairly competitive, but fortunately I was able to get two actuarial internships while I was there. One was in life insurance and one was in property insurance. So I have some experience on both sides there. And then after school, I graduated and went full time at a life insurance company and was working there for four years in an actuarial position. So I have lots of experience on the job as an actuary. Um, but now I've decided to stop working as an actuary and help people pass their actuarial exams full time. So that's what I've been doing now in the study strategy program. Um, basically, I help people pass exam P and FM and sometimes IFM. Um, but I've been doing that for about two and a half years now. So I have lots of knowledge about um, just how to pass the exams, what typically causes people to fail them, and so much more. So that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Okay. So please remember, if you have questions, keep them in the Q&A section. If you just want to chat about anything that I've talked about during the training, you can put that in the chat and other people can just jump in there. If you're talking in the chat, make sure that you have it set to go to all panelists and attendees. Otherwise, not everyone can see what you've been typing. Okay, so today we're here because actuarial exams are extremely difficult. Um, for those of you that don't know, about 50% of people fail and act their actuarial exam each month. So. Exam P is a 30 question exam and it is offered every two months. So you can take exam P in January, in March, in May and July, etc. every other month. And exam FM is a 35 question exam and it is offered every other month in between. So you can take exam FM in February or April or June, etc. But so each month, about, there's only about a 50% pass rate, and that means that 50% of people are passing. But uh, that includes people that are writing the exam for their second time, or their third time, or their fourth time. Um, and some people have even tried it more than that. So uh, that 50% pass mark is not all people that are taking the exam for their first time. The number of, or the percentage of people that actually pass the exam on their first attempt is actually fairly low, definitely less than 50. I would guess around 25%-ish of people pass the exam the very first time they try. So we want you to be one of those people. So that's what we're going to be talking about on this training. These exams are a lot different than other exams that you've probably taken in the past. Um, for one, it's a math exam that is multiple choice. Both exam P and FM are multiple choice exams. So you have five, uh, so you'll get a question and then you have five possible solutions that you can choose from. Uh, so that's a bit different than you've probably ever seen before. But also actuarial exams are self-study exams. So that means other, you, you kind of just get your study material and then you're on your own. There's not much more help and guidance along the way. So there's no instructor, or you're just left to your own devices basically once you get that study material. 
Also, these exams tend to have a lot more material, the concepts are difficult, and the exams require that you move really fast. So for both exam P and FM, you're going to have to answer each of your questions on the exam in less than six minutes. So that means you have to be speeding through these exams. There isn't much time. Um, so really studying for actuarial exams in itself is hard, passing them is hard, and there's just not much support. Um, most people are trying to do this alone. So, and I guess there's, there's a little bit of help you can get online from people you don't really know, but for the most part, people are trying to do this alone because they don't know anyone else that isn't an actuary or is even studying to be an actuary. Okay, so if you stick around to the end of this training, you're going to learn the top three reasons why people fail their exams and what you can do differently to make sure that you are not one of them. Okay, so if that sounds good to you, put yes in the chat and we will get right into it. Uh, while you're doing that, I just wanna let you know that at the end, if you stay to the very end, I'm going to be giving you an exam P and FM resource guide, which has tons of helpful study tips. It has suggested guidelines. It has all my recommended study materials for both exams and where you can go to get lots of free practice questions. So that's for anyone that stays to the very end but I probably will forget to give this to you. So when I get close to the end and it sounds like we're going to wrap up soon, please put in the chat and remind me to give that to you guys because I will probably forget. Um, I also wrote down some notes on my computer over here. You probably see me looking over to the side a bit and that's because I wrote down lots of notes and I don't want to forget to tell you anything. So I will be looking over there a bit. Um, and like I said before, if you have questions about the topics we are talking about, you can put them in the Q&A section. Okay, so I think that is everything that I wanted to say before we get started. At the very end of the training, like it's impossible for me to tell you everything that you need to know through this 45 minute uh, presentation or one hour, whatever it ends up being. So at the end, I am going to tell you where you can go to get more help too. Okay, I see lots of yeses in the chat. Wow, that is lots of yeses. Perfect, so it sounds like you guys are ready to go. Okay, so we are going to go from the number three most common reason all the way up to the number one most common reason that people fail their exams. So the number one reason is because they try to do this whole actuarial thing alone. Okay, so um, before you ever start studying for your actual exam, you may not even understand how big of a how big of a problem this is because when like when you are going through the exam process and studying for the exams, until you actually start doing that and are a couple months in, you don't really realize how hard it is to stay motivated to keep going and how hard it is to stay focused. But that's why it's so beneficial to have help on this journey and have a group of other people that can help you. So outside of, for me, outside of school, there was really no one that understood what I was going through when I was studying for my exams. My family didn't really understand what I was doing. They would ask how things were going, but they weren't really people that I could talk to about an actuary and, and what problems I was struggling with and stuff like that. Um, my, my friends from high school didn't really understand it or anything. None of them decided to become actuaries. So I didn't really have anyone to talk about, talk about actuarial stuff too. Um, and you know, it's really fun and exciting to have someone that really knows what you're talking about and can help you. Like it's fun to be able to bounce ideas off of people and see what someone else is doing and maybe you can try that too. Um, but when you're trying to do that alone, it, when you're trying to study alone, you just can't do that. You have no one else to help you. You have no one else to go to for support. You have no one else to go to for advice. Um, and I was in that exact same, that exact situation. No one knew what struggles I was going through. They didn't know the difficulties. They knew what I was doing was hard, but they just couldn't really help because they didn't know how to help. 
So when you're going through your actuarial exams, you're really going to want to have a close group of people or just be surrounded by a community of people that can help you along the way, help you stay motivated, help give you advice, uh, keep you focused and stuff like that. It's so beneficial to just this whole actuarial journey that you're starting right now. So let me know in the chat right now, do you have a group of friends to study with for your exam? There is a little bit of a lag, but I, I just want to know if you have that group of people there to give you the motivation, the, uh, the support, keep you focused on your studying, people that you can go to to ask questions when you're unsure about things and stuff like that. Okay, so a lot of you are saying, no, you don't. Um, Marcia says, kind of. Okay, M Maria has a coworker and a manager. That's really good. Um, actually, I will tell you a bit about this in, just in a few minutes, but that a lot of the time when you actually get your very first people that understand you is when you go to start working. So it looks like you have a coworker and a manager. Um, no, no, not entirely. Um, I don't have anyone, sort of. Okay, so I'm seeing a lot of you are actually struggling with this right now. And you are going through the same thing that I was when I was studying for my actuarial exams. You just don't have anyone around you that knows what you're doing and what you're going through and all these difficulties that you're struggling with. So my guess is that if you're like me, you kind of feel lonely. It feels difficult. It feels a bit stressful sometimes. And you just have no way to let all that out and, and just tell other people what you're going through. And in some ways it can, for some people, it can make you lose sight of your dreams and, and your motivation to just continue in this career because you kind of feel like you're doing this completely alone. You're the only one doing it. And that's definitely not what we want for you. So if you can connect with a like-minded group of people that will inspire you to keep going, stay motivated, it's really going to help. So like I was saying earlier, I didn't really have this group of people until I started my first full-time job. That's when I really started to realize how beneficial it was to have people around me that were at all different levels. So when I first started my uh, full-time job, I had three exams passed at that time. So there weren't very many people below me that had fewer exams, but there were lots of people above me in the company that had taken five or six exams. Some of them were fully qualified. So having all that support of people that were ahead of me was really beneficial because not only were they able to help me um, to answer questions and help, like, help me know what I needed to do next, they were also just, it was also just nice to be able to talk to people that knew what I was talking about. And it kept, it kept me motivated. Like I finally was able to see that there are other people around doing this same thing. So, and, and becoming an actuary is such a major part of your life. And when you're just not able to um, kind of talk about that with anyone else, it, it just feels really lonely. So that was my situation. I was fortunate when I got my full-time job to have that big community of other actuaries and aspiring actuaries that were on their journey to becoming fully qualified. And that's really what kept me motivated and pushing through the exams, even when it got tough and when I didn't feel like studying anymore and stuff like that. Um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like that for you right now. For example, I, in my study strategy program, I actually have a WhatsApp group of a whole bunch of people that are taking exam P and F from right now. Like it's everyone in the program. So right now there's over 150 people in the study strategy program and they're all invited into the WhatsApp group as part of their membership. So in that group, I'm constantly seeing everyone help each other. Um, whenever someone has a question about a math problem, they're not sure what they're doing wrong. Other people jump in there and help. Some people ask for advice on what they should do in certain situations. Maybe they're feeling not focused or motivated and stuff. And other people just jump in there and try to motivate them to study even when they don't want to. So just having that kind of a group for you can be so beneficial too. 
it doesn't necessarily have to be someone that it or a group of people that are ahead of you but even just having those people that are right at the same stage as you is really beneficial too because it gives you it gives you the same kind of community um, feel and and it's actually better in some ways because they are right in the nitty-gritty of everything with you studying for the exact same exam so in my situation most of the people in my community of actuaries were ahead of me. They had already studied for the exam that I was going to be studying for, so they couldn't really help me with the math and all that. Um, so having a group of people that are actually studying for the same exam would have been really beneficial because I could have gone to them and asked for tips and advice and how, how to solve this problem or what I'm doing wrong. So Having a community to immerse yourself in and keep you motivated and focused is really going to make a huge difference when you're studying for your exam. It'll keep you motivated, it'll push you uh, to move forward and keep you focused. And, and it doesn't have to be a, a necessary, necessarily a group that's right near you. It can be an online group. They're just as beneficial. Maybe you could text with someone, maybe you could do a video chat, or maybe you could just join an online community uh, that that has a whole bunch of people taking the exam at the same time as you and that will really help too. Okay so if you have any questions relating to this topic go ahead and ask them in the Q&A section right now. I will get to those. So if you have any questions relating to community or anything that I've talked about so far just ask in the Q&A section. There is a button right down below the video that says Q&A and that's where you can click to ask your questions. Um, one question that I do commonly get is how to find the motivation to begin studying after you've failed an exam. So I'm not sure, I didn't ask whether any of you had already tried the exam before and failed, but if that's a situation that you've been in, then you already know that it's kind of hard to go through that like studying so hard for an exam, you take the exam, you put all your effort into it, and then you end up failing. And if, and if you know that situation, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But for those of you that don't, I'm sure you can imagine what that would be like. And you, you probably just can imagine how demotivating it would be to fail your exam after working so hard. So if that's a situation that you're in, you do definitely want to implement this when you're studying for your exam again. You need a community of people that will motivate you to keep going and just uh, encourage you to try again, keep going, stay focused, and don't give up on your dreams because if, if you give up now, you're, you're going to regret it for sure. If you, if you end up failing an exam and decide to just quit studying all, for actuarial exams after that, you will regret it because this is obviously a dream that you've had for a long time maybe, and by just failing it one time and giving up after that, it, it's nah, just don't do that. You don't want to be in a situation years from now where you had wished that you had tried again and then you wasted two years. So if you are looking for motivation, find that group of people that are in the same situation as you studying for the same exam to keep you motivated and that will help so much but do not give up. Okay I see a few questions here I'll get to two of them. Um, okay do you offer guidance to students doing L LTIM and, and further or do you only focus on exam P and FM? So right now, my programs only focus on exam P and FM. Um, and if you have worked with me in the past on exam P or FM, then you can also work with me for IFM. But for right now, I'm only focusing on those three exams because I really want to help people. I, I just want to make sure that the program is as good as it can possibly be for those three exams and, and specifically P and FM. Like I've been helping people on those ones for over two years now. IFM I've just started helping people with for about the last six months. So I'm in the process of determining how I can keep making that program better and better. But the P and FM program is already really good. Um, so for right now, I'm just focusing all my energy on those. So I'm not helping with any further ones at the moment, but that could change in the future. I'm not sure yet. Okay. Um, Okay, here's another one from Erica. 
you said you majored in actuarial science, but did you, uh, were you able to make friends from university? Uh, for me, personally, I'm not a very outgoing social person. So I wasn't really one to go to events and, and meet people. I didn't really talk to a lot of people in my class. I did have a few people that I would talk to in class, but I typically didn't go study with them and stuff. Um, I, I just prefer to do my work on my own most of the time. So I did have some friends from university, but I actually didn't really make very good use of the, them, unfortunately, and when I was starting to prepare for my exams. And also a lot of the time I, when I was preparing for my exam, I was also either working or I was also doing other classes. So I didn't have a whole lot of time to go out to meet up with people and study and stuff like that. So yes, I did have some friends in university, but for me, that's not where I really got the, I didn't really find much motivation in that. So that's a really good question. A lot of you maybe are going to school for actuarial science and have that group of friends and stuff that are doing the same thing. And if you do have that, then it would be a really good idea to just connect everyone into one group so that you're able to just talk on there and keep motivated, help people when you have problems and stuff like that. But for a lot of you, that, that may not be the situation because I know a lot of people don't um, go to a school that offers actuarial science or maybe you're studying in a statistics program or something and there's not very many other people that are going to are planning to go the actuarial route. Okay, so I'm going to move on now. I do not want to go past an hour and a half, or sorry, an hour and 15 minutes. Um, okay, so now we're going to go on to number two. The number two reason that people tend to fail their exams is because they don't know how to prepare for actuarial exams properly. So this is a big one because just it's so difficult to know how to prepare for an exam that you've never taken before, that you don't really have any guidance and support on and stuff like that. So this is a big issue and I completely understand how this becomes a problem for people. Um, it was for me. So. When I was studying for my first exam, I had absolutely no idea how to prepare. Like I said, I was doing a lot of it alone. Um, I didn't have much guidance. I didn't, I didn't know what other people did to prepare for their exams. Um, and just actuarial exams are so much different than other exams that I had taken in the past. Uh, like I was talking about earlier, there, there are multiple choice exams, which is weird for, for a uh, math exam. They're much more difficult. There's a lot of material. There's no instructor. 50% um, of people fail each time. So these are difficult. And, and you're not used to these types of exams because they're completely self-study exams. You have to know exactly what you should be doing throughout your whole study period. Um, whereas for your typical exams, you'd have kind of a structure. Your, your instructor would guide you through the material that you needed to know, and then you would probably have some reviews that, uh, review that your teacher gave you to do, um, and there'd be a specific date on which the exam would be, and, um, and yeah, so there's really some guidance in a typical uh, like school-like situation where you usually would take exams, but for actuarial exams, you are left up to your own devices. Um, there's no strict timeline. You can take the exam whenever you want, um, and there's, there's just not much support. So these exams are a lot different, and I had no idea how to prepare for them. And because of that, I did it all wrong. I didn't focus on the right things. I, I prepared in the wrong way. A lot of the time, I didn't study the things I should be studying. I didn't know how to, like, what I should be studying. I didn't know how prepared I needed to be. I just had no idea. <laughs> So I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this and you probably just feel like you have no idea whether you're doing it right or, or not. So I call this the trial and error, error approach because really you're just trying one method and then you hope you like go take the exam and you hope that it works. And if it doesn't, you have to try something different for a little bit and then go take the exam again and just keep doing that until you 
finally get that approach that works. So what I recommend is if this is something that, if you're not sure of how to study for your exam, what you need to do is make, is get a solid study strategy in place so that you actually are able to figure out what you need to be doing every single day of, of the, like, Every single day from now until your exam, you need to have some kind of structure around that so you know specific tasks that you're going to complete each day. So right now, do, do any of you know what your study strategy is going to look like for the, your exam or do you have some kind of study strategy already chosen? And if you do, or if you don't have that, just let me know in the comments. Um, so, or sorry, not in the comments, we're not on YouTube here. Let me know in the chat what your study strategy plan is going to look like, or if you don't have a plan already, let me know that in the comment. And that's okay, that's perfectly fine if you don't, because I didn't either. Um, but I just wanna see what kind of things you guys are already planning on doing. Okay, so I see a lot of you saying that you don't have a plan yet, you don't, you're not really sure, you don't have a legit study plan. Okay, um, Erica says she doesn't have a plan yet. Uh, Maria says during the weekdays she does a lot of practice questions and on weekends she does practice exams. Okay, good. Um, Zane doesn't have a plan. Okay, I completely understand that you guys are, are kind of lost on this and I, I was too when I was in your situation. So. Let's look at that a bit more. So these exams are different than you've ever taken before. Now you're using the trial and error approach. The benefit it, of setting out a, a plan in advance is that you can repeat this plan over and over again for your other exams if it works. But if it doesn't work, then at least you'll have that um, like kind of, documentation, I guess you could call it, of what you did so you know where you can change things differently. Uh, what I recommend is you actually get out a calendar um, in the uh, or resource guide that I'm going to give you at the very end of this um, planning or this session. I actually have listed out there what dates you should aim for as your milestone. So in there, I've kind of given you a template of what your entire study strategy should look like. So I've given you specific dates that you should aim to have certain things done by. So I'd highly recommend if you don't know what your study strategy is right now, at the very least, have a look at that um, and just create a calendar for yourself so that you know what you're going to do every single day in order to meet the milestones that I've put into that uh, schedule for you. So for example, I'll have when you should start studying, I'll have when you should try to get through your study material, I have uh, the date that you should um, be, I don't know, getting certain num percentage of practice problems right, and then you should move on to your practice exams and start trying to reach a certain level on those exams by a certain date and everything. So I have that all planned out for you in the resource guide that I have ready for you at the very end of this session. So if that has been a problem with for you, I highly recommend going to check that out afterwards. Um, this this is still kind of using a trial and error approach in a way, but it's going to help give you a little guidance on what you should be aiming for at least, and then you need to break that out so you know exactly what to do each and every day. So if you have a really good study plan in place, it's really going to help you pass your exam. I know this because every single day I'm, I, I actually create in the study strategy program a whole, daily goals calendar is what I call it. And it tells everyone or each person, it's, it's a personalized schedule for each person. So they know exactly what they need to do each and every day. And I know this helps so many people that are confused about what they need to be doing to study for their exam. And that's exactly what I think that you should do too, using those, um, well, you can of course join the study strategy program, or you can just go to the, 
um, milestones that I've given you that I will give you in the resource guide and just break it out yourself. So for me personally, it took me about a year and a half to pass my first actuarial exam. I'm not sure, maybe you've heard this, maybe you haven't, but I ended up failing exam P twice. So it took me a long time to use this trial and error method um, approach to studying and finally get a strategy and a plan that worked. Um, but after I finally figured that out, I was able to apply that same technique to exam P and MFE, which is kind of the equivalent of IFM now. So I didn't actually take IFM. I took an exam called MFE, but it's very similar content. Uh, so after I finally figured out that strategy that worked on exam P, I was able to use the same thing for exam FM and the same thing for exam MFE and pass those two exams on my very first try. So once you do find a, a strategy that works, you can keep that strategy and apply it to your future exams. So I really, I, I really suggest that you make this a priority in your studying is coming up with a plan so that you know exactly what you're going to do each and every day. And then once you figure that out, you can apply the same kind of techniques to your other exams. Um, you also may have heard about Bobby. Bobby is one of the members of my study strategy program and he posted a video on YouTube probably about two or three months ago now. So he tried to take his first his exam. Um, I, I don't know exactly when it was that he took his first attempt at the exam, but when he was studying for it, he just had no clue how to prepare. He kept getting stuck, he gave up for a while, he came back to the exam and, and finally registered for the exam, but then by the time exam day come, he still wasn't well enough prepared. And unfortunately, he ended up failing the exam. But fast forward a few months, or it might have been even close to a year, I'm, I'm not 100% sure on the details there, but he ended up joining the study strategy program. And he had he finally had this whole structured study plan right in front of him that he could follow every single day. And for him, that really helped him uh, just know how he should go about preparing for the exam. And that helped him pass. Like when he was in the study strategy program, he passed his exam. And he, he um, I guess, says a lot of his success in that is due to having the study strategy program and that plan of exactly what he should be doing each and every day to prepare for him his exam. So now he can go and study the same way for his next exam too, exam FM. So having this, um, this plan in place is really, really, really important if you want to make sure that you have the best chance of passing your exam. It's really like a lot of people think that maybe they're not smart enough to pass or their exam or whatever. Um, and that's why they fail. But really, a lot of the time, it's just because they didn't prepare for their exam in the right way. I, I honestly believe that everyone is smart enough to pass the exam if they're willing to put in the effort, know how to prepare and know how to prepare for it properly. So that so that's basically this whole topic um, is just make sure you have a good study plan in place. You know what you're going to do every single day and you follow that plan so that you can um, kind of be as well prepared as possible, but then also use that same structure on your future exams. So like I said, after this training, I will give you that resource guide that tells you exactly the milestones that you should be aiming for. Um, what else did I have here? Yes, okay, I think that's all. So let me know in the in the Q&A section if you have any questions about this at all. I'll pick two questions. Um, make sure you're asking in the Q&A section. There's a button right below the video where you can ask your questions. Okay, so um, one question that I commonly get, uh, this is just a common question. It's not one from one of you, so I'll, take, I'll still take two more questions from you guys, but one question that I often get is how long should you prepare for an exam? So members of the study strategy program, I highly recommend 
if you're going to join the program that you join at least 14 weeks before you plan to take your exam. So that's, that's my general recommendation, at least 14 weeks. So that means that if you're going to start right now and you're going to take exam P, then you can take exam P in May and that will give you about 14 weeks, a little over. Or if you're going to take exam FM first, then you should probably take that exam in June of 2020. Um, so 14 weeks is like the bare minimum. I usually recommend starting beforehand so that you can take things at a slower pace. And if for, for some reason, maybe you have school or maybe you have projects at work that might interfere with your studying on some days, it allows you some more wiggle room in your schedule so that you can, um, you don't have to stress about studying on those days, the same days you're taking final or exams and stuff like that. So I highly recommend starting before 14 weeks, but at a bare minimum, you should give yourself 14 weeks to prepare for your first exam. Okay, so I'm going to take a few questions about this topic now. Um, oh, how, how can I join the study strategy program? Is there a fee attached? I'm going to talk more about how you can join the study strategy program right at the end here if you guys want more help on preparing for your exam. There is a fee, um, but actually for members of this, like anyone that's registered and joining this uh, training, I'm going to offer you a very special discount on the four month membership option. So stick around, I will be talking more about that. There is a fee for the program. It's, uh, this is how I, like this is what I do for a living now. So I'm constantly helping people prepare for their exams. I set up a study schedule for you. And I do some live trainings in there. There's a Q&A forum where you can ask all your questions and everything. So it's a huge program. I definitely charge a fee for it, but um, it's, it's definitely worth it if you're serious about passing your exam. Um, okay. Can you recommend a study manual is the next question from Emma. Uh, so actually in the resource guide at the very end that I'm going to give you for exam P and FM, I have all my study material recommendations in there. Typically, if you are going to take exam P, then I recommend either getting the Actex study manual or the coaching actuaries bundle that includes video lessons and their ADAPT um, question program. So ADAPT is their program that gives you over a thousand practice questions and you can do exams, practice exams in there and they're set up almost exactly like the real exam. So for exam P, yeah, I either recommend ACTEX or the Coaching Actuaries Bundle, um, or if you're taking an exam FM first, then I recommend the ASM Study Manual or the Coaching Actuaries Bundle. Um, uh, but there are more recommendations in the resource guide that I'll be giving you. Um, it kind of depends on, there, there's other options that could be good for you depending on some different factors. So I break that all down in the resource guide that I'll be giving you at the end. Okay, one more question on this topic. Um, okay, here's one that I get a lot of the time. Uh, so Sibs asks, can you use old study notes from 2009 for exam P? So exam P hasn't really changed very much over the past 10 years or so. So you would probably be okay using those, but I, I highly recommend that you invest in some newer materials just because, um, so recently, Actex, which when you say study notes in your question, I'm guessing you're probably talking about the Actex study manual. So their old manual doesn't include goal. Goal is really good for getting lots more practice problems. So that's one major benefit um, of purchasing a new set of materials. But also there are some topics that have changed over the years. Uh, so by using an older manual, you may not get all, you, it may not cover all the topics that are on the current exam, which would not obviously be the ideal situation, but you can probably make that manual work if you have to. I just highly recommend against it. I always encourage you to purchase a newer manual if you can. It doesn't necessarily have to be the newest one, but um, ideally it would be. 
and, and 2009 is over 10 years old. So for in that situation, like I, I would get a new one if you can, but if you really have to make that one work, then it should be okay. All right, now I'm going to go on to the very last one, which is actually the number one reason that people tend to fail their exams is because they don't fit in enough study time. And this is a huge one, and this is, was definitely a big factor for me. So when I was studying for my first exam, I was actually working full time. I was trying to take some courses online. Um, I play a lot of soccer now, and I played a lot of soccer before um, when I was studying for these exams. So I was trying to keep up with that. I didn't want to just ignore all my, um, like my health. Uh, so I was trying to do these three major things all at the same time that I was also trying to study for an actuarial exam. And it was crazy. My life was basically go, 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 go. I didn't really get much sleep. I was always tired. Um, I was trying to fit in so much stuff. Um, and, and just a lot of the time, studying got put on the back burner. So for work, people were expecting me to show up. So I, I showed up for school and my courses. There were due dates for assignments. There were due dates for exams. There were classes that I had to attend or whatever, so I had to be there. Um, for soccer, there was a set schedule. I was there when the games were set to be played. For my actuarial exams, there were no due dates. There was nothing pushing me to stay on track of with, with studying, so it constantly fell on the back burner. I was always behind on my studying. Um, a lot of the time I would plan to get studying done later that day, but by the time it came time to start that studying I was either too tired or other things came up that I had to do so I was always putting studying on the back burner and that's one of the number one reasons that people fail their exam is because they're so busy and they just don't fit in enough time to study as well as they need to so studying for an actuarial exam it does require consistency over a long period of time like i said about 14 weeks at least at the very least you need 14 weeks um, you can't cram for them in just a few weeks that won't work so if you think of other things in your life like just like i was talking about if you think of the other things in your life like maybe your work or your schooling or just other things that are going on for you most of them probably have strict deadlines or things that people are expecting of you to have done. And that gives you accountability. So when people are there expecting you to be somewhere or they're expecting you to have something done, you get it done because in a way they are holding you accountable to the thing that you need to get done. And that puts, that makes it a priority for you. That means you'll get it done. So for example, if, you're, if your teacher at school gave you an assignment, you would get it done by the due date. If, you're, if your manager at work asks you to have a certain project done by a certain time, you get it done because your manager needs it done by that time and you're going to get it done. So maybe in the past you hired a fitness coach or something. Um, when you had to go work out with that fitness coach, you were there at the time that you guys planned. So all these things, they have accountability built into them to make sure that you do it. Um, and that just helps to keep your studying a priority. So let me know in the chat what other things right now in your life are going to or currently are stopping you from getting your studying in every single day and staying consistent. I know there's going to be so many comments in here about things that are be becoming distractions or just other things that are making it difficult for you to fit in study time. So let me know what they are. Okay, so Dan says he has a commute for four and a half hours per day. A commute will definitely get in the way of uh, studying for your exam. Maria has a full-time job, a training and a social life, yes. Um, Justin works full time as an underwriter. That's great for becoming an actuary, but it's definitely going to make it hard to fit in enough time for your studying. Uh, Erica has extracurricular activities. 
and full-time school. So can you imagine trying to study for an exam, an actuarial exam, while you have a full-time school schedule and extra extracurricular activities? Uh, okay, so Zane has a 55-hour work week, fitness time, and a social life that she also wants to keep up with. Um, Noah has a full is a full time student athlete. Wow, it's going to be difficult to keep up with your exams when you have that for sure. Um, Maria has family and a, and she's a full time actuarial analyst. Sibs <laughs> Sibs says his girlfriend has, is his issue. Okay, yep, girlfriends can be complicated and time consuming. Um, Christina works full time with an hour commute. Um, Reservist, she's trying to maintain health and fitness and a social life. Allie's working full time, 15 credit hours in college and fitness schools. So you guys are trying to do so many other things at the same time that you are studying for your actuarial exams. So this is definitely going to be an issue for you, is just getting in enough study time. So you're busy, you've got work, you've got school, you, some of you have kids and family, some of you have a girlfriend that takes up a lot of time. So what you need to do is make sure that you have something to hold you accountable to your study goals. Okay, so earlier we talked about creating your study schedule so that you know exactly what you need to get done every single day. But if you really, really want to make sure that you're successful on your exam, you have to find someone to keep you accountable to that schedule. Otherwise, it's going to fall on the back burner because you guys have all this other stuff going on in your life that's going to make it so difficult to keep on top of your studying when you're so busy. So just having accountability will make a huge difference. Um, I actually found this really interesting statistic online about the uh, about uh, accountability and how it helps people achieve goals. So listen to this. It was from the American Society of Training and Development, and they did a study on accountability. So for someone that just has an idea of what their goal is, and, and so basically, if you are sitting at your computer right now and you just know that you want to pass your actuarial exam in, let's say, May, there's only a 10% chance that you are actually going to do that, if you, think, if you just think that you might. But if you consciously decide that you will do it, then there's a 25% chance. So if you're deciding right now that you are going to go put in the effort that you need to do in order to pass your exam, then there's a 25% chance that you'll pass. If you decide when you are going to do it, like you actually set a date right now and decide when you are going to pass that exam, there's a 40% chance that you'll actually go and pass it when you said you were going to. If you then go and plan how you're going to get from right where you are right now to being fully prepared for that exam, then there's a 50% chance. But if you actually commit to someone that you will actually do it, then there's a 65% chance. And this is the big one. If you have specific accountability appointments with people, meaning someone is set to actually look and make sure that you are on track with your schedule, keeping you accountable for every single day of studying, then your chance of actually achieving that goal skyrockets to 95%, okay? So having accountability can make a huge difference in whether you're successful on your exam. So I really don't want you to take this lightly at all. Accountability is a huge factor in helping you be successful. So let's talk about a, a few other people that this worked for. So Divya is actually a member of the study strategy program. And well, she's not right now because she passed her exam, but she was a member and she decided to join the program on her fourth attempt at exam P. So whenever someone joins the study strategy program, I ask them why they decided to join. And I just do that because I like to get a sense of why people want to join the program, what they want to get out of it, and all that kind of stuff. So 
for about 50% of the people that join the program, they actually say that having accountability is the number one reason that they join the program. So I haven't really talked about this yet, but in the study strategy program, I do two weekly accountability check-ins where my team or I go directly into your study schedule and make sure that you are on track with your studying. So this is a huge benefit for people that are really busy because, well, just like um, Divya is, uh, I'm going to tell you about Divya's story, it makes a huge difference in her studying. So she actually said when she joined that she just, in her previous attempts at the exam, she just wasn't disciplined enough to, and she didn't do enough practice and, and she didn't have the right guidance to prepare for her exam. So Divya is very busy with other things, but for her fourth attempt in the study strategy program, she was sure to stay on track with her study schedule. And she did that because every or twice per week, me or my team were going into her study schedule and making sure she was getting the work done. And that finally added accountability into her study schedule. And that went, made her go from being not very disciplined with her studying to very disciplined. And like I already said, this helped her and she passed her exam. So adding in that accountability made a huge difference for Divya. Um, I already talked a little bit about Bobby who was previously a member of the study strategy program. So Bobby passed exam P in the program, and then he decided that he was going to prepare for exam FM um, on his own because he had now learned the techniques and everything that he needed in order to prepare for the exam. So he was going to take those techniques and prepare in the exact same way for exam FM which is of course what I hope for people because I know learning all the foundational stuff for your first exam is very beneficial and you can use that to study for your future exams. But Bobby realized after a few months of trying to study for exam, for exam FM on his own that he just wasn't getting enough studying done. Without the ch accountability check-ins and stuff, he was just putting studying off. Um, he actually said specifically, that he decided to rejoin the program for exam FM because otherwise he would laze away and not get his work done. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of a funny way to put it, but really this is what happens when you don't have that accountability built into your study strategy. Um, so I'm sure many of you can relate. You probably have things going on that you want to get done and maybe you haven't for so long. Like for me, for example, for so long, I have been wanting to go out to my garage and clean it up. I've had that on my to-do list for probably two years now, but it never really gets done because no one is coming to look at it. If one of you told me that you were going to come see my garage next week, I would be sure to have it all done and cleaned up for you because you would be expecting a clean garage. But until then, until someone tells me they're going to come inspect my garage, I'm probably not going to do it. And I'm sure there are a lot of things that you have that exact same situation with. Like there are things that you want to get done, but just don't have that urgency built in. So you probably never get to them. Okay, so if you find someone to hold you accountable to your studying, you will significantly increase your chances of passing. Accountability forces you to get things done. Okay, so. That is all for that one. Those are the top three reasons that people fail their exams and how you can kind of counteract them so that they are not issues for you. Please let me know in the Q&A section if you have any questions about this accountability in your study strategy. Okay. Um, this one isn't entirely related, but please ask related questions only. Um, Eric asks, ideally, how many hours of daily study do you recommend? So members of the study strategy program, if they are starting about 14 weeks before their exam, then typically they take about three hours of studying per day or most days of the week. A lot of them study for six days of the week and they need three hours of studying per day. Really, I don't have a recommended number of hours to study, and that's just because it, 
it's not about how many hours you prepare for your exam, it's about how well prepared you are. So for some people, it's going to take three hours per day to study and be the same level of, pre of preparedness as someone that studies for five hours per day. It really just depends on so many things. It depends on your background. It depends on what study materials you use. It depends on how focused you are during your studying. It depends on what else you have going on in your life. Think other things can cause distractions and stuff. So it's such an uh, individual uh, question that I can't really answer it um, and, and generalize it for everyone just because it's not about how many hours you study. I, I would never tell someone that if you study for 300 hours, then you'll be in good enough shape for the exam because that's not true. It's about how well prepared you are for the exam and that's what's going to determine whether or not you should take the exam or whether you should wait and keep studying. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, okay, I'll take one more question here. Um, okay. Jay asks, do you think age 40 is too late to start studying uh, for an actuarial career? Um, I definitely don't think that it, that being 40 is too late to start studying. Lots of people do that. Um, hopefully you have, or maybe you have past experience um, that you have been able to acquire throughout your past years of working that would be beneficial in an actuarial position. There are definitely lots of skills that you can learn in other positions that would make you a great candidate for actuarial positions. Um, and, and not all the time, Companies don't always want to hire the youngest people they can find. Like a lot of the time, your age might be a benefit. So what I would say to someone that wants to start their career right now is try it. Like you're never going to know whether you can become an actuary or not if you don't try. So if, if I was to tell you right now that it's too late, then that's kind of just um, – giving up on a dream that you may have. Um, and I think that you would regret that. So try it. The worst thing that happens is that you don't get a job. But honestly, I believe that if you're willing to put in the effort and do whatever it takes to get that actuarial job and make sure that you are as well um, qualified as possible, then eventually you will get it. You just have to be willing to put in the work. Okay, so I don't see any more questions here related to accountability. Um, I will try to answer a few more questions at the very end, but I did tell you that I'm going to let you guys know how you can get more help preparing for your exam. So the study strategy program is my program that I talked about earlier. I told you that I've been doing this for almost two and a half years now, just helping people pass exam P and FM. I've been entirely, I've entirely committed my whole working life to helping people pass these exams. So that is what the study strategy program is. Basically in the program, you're getting all the guidance and support that you need to make sure that you're as well prepared as possible by the time exam day comes around. So there's lots of different benefits of being in this program. I'm actually going to just switch over to the screen and show you guys my screen so that I can show you a bit about the study strategy program and how it can help you. Okay, so. And actually, before that, I'm just going to put a link in the, in the chat area here where you can go and check out the study strategy program. Actually, you know what? I'll do that after I show you guys what, what it is all about. Okay, so the study strategy program, basically when you join, you're going to get access to so much stuff, but the stuff to help you pass your exam, of course. Um, what I really want to show you, though, is the personalized study workbook that you're going to get. So everyone that joins it gets a personalized uh, study strategy. Um, it's created specifically for you. So actually, this right here is an example of a member's current study strategy workbook. 
um, but it, I've taken out all the personal information uh, just for privacy reasons. So you get, there's tons of tabs here, but what I want to look at here specifically is the daily goals calendar. So it, with this calendar, it will break down exactly what you need to be doing in your studying every single day so that you, you know what you need to do. So a lot of you said you didn't have a study plan. You're not really sure what you need to be doing each day and stuff like that. So by joining the study strategy program, I will actually create a personalized study strategy for you and you'll get this daily goals calendar. So you will know what you need to do every single day. And in this calendar, you can, once you're done a task, you'll be able to go here and mark it as complete. And let's say, for example, this task, you aren't able to get it done on that day, but you decide that you're going to do it on your break day, which is Wednesday you can just put will do by Wednesday. So you can track right in this workbook what you've completed so far and what when you're going to get to each task um, if you aren't able to get to it on that day. And you'll also notice that on Mondays and Thursdays right here, they are orange. That's because those are accountability check-in days. And on those days, my team and I go right into your workbook and see how you are progressing. We make sure that you're keeping on top, on top of your daily goals. So this, all, this whole uh, daily goals calendar is one, it's really good for making sure that you're always working on the tasks that are most beneficial for you. You won't have to worry about whether you're preparing for your exam in the right way or whether you're doing things differently than you should be. It really just breaks down everything so that you're always focusing on the tasks that are most beneficial for you. And number two, it keeps that accountability in. So remember, I said the number two reason that people fail their exam is because they don't know how to prepare. Well, this daily goals calendar will make sure that you know exactly what you need to be doing. And I said that the number one reason is because they don't fit in enough study time and you need accountability in order to combat against that. So the study strategy program also gives you accountability. You'll be having check-ins twice per week to make sure that you're keeping on top of your studying. Okay, um, and I also wanted to show you this tracking tab in, oh, I left all this in from last time. Okay, so in your daily goals, you're eventually going to start doing practice questions. Um, you'll be assigned question blocks, and question blocks are basically sets of 15 practice problems. You can see right here that this is question block number one. So when you go ahead and do this question, you will be able to mark right in your workbook whether you get it right or wrong, and you'll be able to go through all of those and mark what, which ones you get right and which ones you get wrong. And on this question block, you're aiming to get at least 50% right. So once you fill all those in, your score will show up. And on this, if this is the ones you got right and wrong, then you'd get 53% on that question block. Now you're going to be doing tons of question blocks, but I use the information that you track here. So I use these scores, these, um, and I update your daily goals calendar appropriately, depending on how well you're doing. And that makes sure that you are really always focusing on the tasks that are going to be most beneficial for you. So when I show you this daily goals calendar that you get, it's not just set and it's done. It's not like that's the only thing you get. I'm actually constantly seeing how you are progressing and performing in on the different tasks. And I go and update your daily goals accordingly so that you, so that you are really focusing on what you need to be and not focusing on different things that aren't going to be as beneficial for you. I've helped hundreds of people in the program. So by now I've learned what you need to be doing at each stage and how well you need to be performing by the time exam day comes around. And I, I am constantly monitoring your progress and your uh, performance and making sure that you're performing, you're doing tasks each day that are going to help increase your level of understanding and making sure that by exam day, you're as well prepared as possible. Okay, so on top of that, you're going to get lots of other things. So you will get a personalized workbook. You'll also get access to the Q&A forums where you can ask questions on anything you want related to the math and everything. So it doesn't matter what study materials you're using, you can go in here and ask questions. Um, a lot of you may know that 
when you do practice questions, a lot of the time the solutions to those questions aren't very clear. So for the most part, people in here are asking about why the solution is a certain way. And there's already over 1300 questions that have been asked here. So it's likely that possibly a question that you have has already been asked in these forums, but if they haven't, then you can go ahead and start a new question and you'll always get answers within 24 hours. So that's another major benefit of the program. Um, there's lots of detailed solutions. So I've gone through some specific problems and provided more detailed solutions so that you don't get confused. There are study strategy videos that will be um, assigned to you in your daily goals. There are very short material, there are very short videos, but they just explain how to go about each step of the way in your studying. There's also lots of studying advice. So if you're having certain problems, like maybe you're having trouble focusing on your practice exams, you can go into here and read what advice I have to say about that. Or maybe you're feeling discouraged after doing some practice problems and you can go in here and read all about that. So there's lots of benefit to being in the program. I also have started doing some live interactive things just like this where you can ask any questions you have um, and it will be just open to people in the study strategy program at that time. And you can, I'll answer anything, any questions you have, whether it be about um, actuarial work, um, exams, anything. Okay, so I will put in the chat right now where you can go to check out that program. I'm going to show you a little bit more. Um, sorry. Okay, so. Um, So in the study strategy program, I, I prepared you a few slides here just to make this easier to show you. So like I already talked about, you get a personalized study schedule, you get the Q&A forums, uh, where you can ask questions about any, any math question you have that you're having trouble with, you can get answers in the Q&A forum. Um, you're also going to get personalized guidance, advice, and check-ins. So like I said, I've been helping people pass these exams for two and a half years, almost three years now. So I have tons of knowledge built up about how to pass actuarial exams. I also spent lots of time working as an, in an actuarial position. I went to school for actuarial science. So I know so much about that actuarial world and passing exams and everything. So by joining the program, you basically get instant access to all that. I'm willing to help you along the way as much as I can. Um, if you need advice or you're having problems or just anything you're struggling with, I'm happy to help you. Um, you always have access to me and my team through email. And also whenever I do those live trainings, you can ask your questions there. And you get the check-ins that I talked about that were also super beneficial for helping busy people stay on track with their studying. You're also going to get access to a WhatsApp group. I did talk about this earlier too. Um, there are over 150 people in the program right now and everyone gets access to the WhatsApp group. So there's always a lot of talking going on in there. People are trying to get help on questions that they're having, they're having difficulty with. People are constantly motivating each other to keep studying. Whenever people need advice, they ask in that group and it's just a really motivational and supportive group of people. And they're all in the exact same stages as you are, which is super beneficial at this stage because you are going to have questions. You're going to lose focus sometimes and everyone in that group is so helpful and motivating. Um, I haven't mentioned this yet, but by joining the study strategy program and in the four month option, you're going to get the $225 pass guarantee. And that means that when, if you are not successful in the program, I will pay your next $225 exam registration fee. So this is something that no one else offers. Most of the time, if you see a pass guarantee, it just means that you get the study material again for free or something. But by joining this program, you're actually going to get $225 reimbursed. So what that means is when you go to register for an exam, the SOA charges you $225 as a registration fee. It doesn't matter whether it's your first attempt, your second attempt, your third, 
doesn't matter. They're always going to charge you this $225 fee. Um, so if you are not successful in the study strategy program, I will pay that fee for you the next time you take the exam. So you can completely not even worry about having to have that uh, big chunk of $225 to have to pay if you have to write the exam again because it's completely going to be covered um, by joining the study strategy program. The only two requirements are that you're in the program for at least 14 weeks, which you will be since you're joining the four month uh, study strategy program option. And you have to make sure that you don't fall more than seven days behind schedule. So I told you the daily goals calendar that I'd set up for you, you just can't fall more than seven days behind schedule in order to qualify for that pass guarantee. Okay, so I want to make sure that you guys completely understand the value that you're getting because a lot of the time it's really difficult to understand how much this is all worth for you. So the personalized study schedule, in the past I've sold those for about $67 and that's just one personalized schedule, not updated, it's just you either follow it exactly or you don't and and it does it's not really updated for you as you go like you would get in the study strategy program so just the personalized study schedule alone is $67 um, I've, I've actually created those for people for $67 Q&A forums I used to sell those alone by themselves for $40 a month so by joining the four month option you're going to get hundred those are about $120 for $40 per month, since this is four months. In the program, you're going to get lots of personalized guidance, advice, and the personal check-ins. So this one was a bit hard to quantify because no one else has a program like this for the actuarial exams, the Society of Actu the SOA actuarial exams. There might be ones for other societies, I'm not sure. But for the Society of Actuaries, this is the only program like this. So it was very difficult to put uh, a kind of value on this um, but I, I just went to like a personal trainer it's very similar to a per personal trainer because you get that all that knowledge and advice that a personal trainer has built up over the years you you wouldn't just go to someone off the street and ask them to be your fitness coach or something you would want someone that has proven results someone that has done this for a long time and knows what they're talking about and has had education in fitness and stuff like that so i thought that was a pretty um comp like a good way to compare a personal coach would charge you about 50 dollars per session most people go to them two times per week so that's about a hundred dollars per week so if, in the study strategy program, if you join the four month option, you're getting about $1,600 of value just by being able to gain all that knowledge of what I have and I, I'm glad to help you anything you need along the way. You're getting all my personal advice um, and those check-ins to keep you on top of your studying. So um, then you're also gonna get the WhatsApp group. I had no idea how to quantify this. Like it's so invaluable to studying for your exam. Every, the more motivation and focus and support you can get on your exam, it's it's going to help you immensely. So the WhatsApp group, I'm not sure, those are just question marks. <laughs> and the $225 pass guarantee, we'll say that's about $225. So all of that combined together is about $2,012. Now I'm not going to ask you guys to pay $2,012 for four month, months in the study strategy program. I'm actually, just for you guys, offering it for $2.99 for four months in the program, okay? So if you go to the link that I provided you in the chat a few minutes ago, you can get all the details on that and you can join the program. This would be for four months, so if you're planning to take your exam in May or June, then this would be a good option. It would, pro it would cover you all the way up to an exam in May, exam P in May. Um, you'd probably have to join for one extra month later if you wanted to, if you were planning to take your exam in June, but this would get you most of the way. Or if your exam is before then, then you can still join. You just wouldn't have the $225 pass guarantee because you do have to be in the program for at least 14 weeks to qualify for that. But this is still an awesome deal. Um, you, let me see here for a second. Um, 
299 divided by 2012. So you're paying about 15% of what this would actually be worth. So $300 or 299 is about 15% um, of 2012. So it's definitely worth it if you're serious about passing your exam and wanna make sure you have the absolute best chance of passing. I know if you're like me, you want to see some testimonials of people that have actually used the program. So I pulled a few here. Um, Matt wrote this on Facebook and I've worked with him for a couple, for three exams now. So he says, as a career changer, I was very worried about the exams and how to prepare. Bria helps so much with passing the exams. She gives you a great study plan, checks in on you consistently to make sure you're understanding. And she also gives you great resources for your questions. With her study schedule and her help, I've been able to pass P, FM, and IFM all on the first try. So that was Matt. Um, he just passed IFM recently, so it's such a huge accomplishment for him. Um, next, we have We here. He has he's also posted on Facebook. Bria has helped me pass both exam P and FM within five months. Her study schedule held me accountable because I tend to procrastinate on my studies. So. For anyone that procrastinates, this is an awesome way to keep on track and make sure that you're making studying a priority and staying consistent. Um, so before using her study strategy program, I failed exam P twice and FN once. Thanks to her, I was able to pass both exams. And I have one more here. Mike, I, I crossed out his last name because this was actually an email and it was an email so it's not public. but. Um, Mike says, hey Bria, I'm happy to let you know I passed my exam today. It feels great to finally get this one done. I want to extend my thanks as well as as well for supporting me for all these month, months. I wouldn't have been able to pass both exam P and FM without you. You have developed me in you have developed in me an amazing foundation for studying for these exams. So if this is your very first exam, joining the study strategy program just to get an understanding of the foundation and how you should prepare for actuarial exams is a really good idea. And then you can take that knowledge and everything you've learned and apply it to future exams. So you don't necessarily have to join the program for all your exams in the future. If you, you are able to get enough foundational knowledge and information on study strategy for your very first exam and you can use that and apply it to your future ones. Okay, so let's go a few, let's um, skip back over to you guys now. If you have any questions about the study strategy program, I will answer them. Please put them in the Q&A section below. Um, okay, I have one here already. Ali asked, is the study strategy program in Canadian dollars or US dollars? It is all in US dollars. So US dollars for that one. Um, you do have a few more questions here. I will get to those in a few minutes. If you have any more questions about the study strategy program, be sure to ask them now. Like this is the best time to ask while I'm here live. If you're not sure if it's a good fit for you, if you are unsure about anything or just have any questions at all, I can answer them right now. So make sure to ask. There's no harm in just asking. I'd be happy to answer your questions. I'm back now. Okay. So if the study strategy program sounds like it would be a good fit for you, you can get it all those four months, everything that we talked about for just $2.99 and that will end, um, I set it for Friday, that's going to end Friday at midnight and there's only 10 spots available at that price. So if it sounds like something that would be beneficial for you that you think would help you um, so that you can stay consistent with your studying if that has been a problem with you for you or if you're just unsure if you're studying in the right way, then join the study strategy program. It will be awesome for making sure you have that foundation and knowledge for future exams. And you're also going to get access to the WhatsApp group for just the support and guidance. So really the, the study strategy program is what I wish was available when I was studying for my exams. It, it really makes all those three things that we talked about, about why people fail their exams, it makes them not an issue because it just covers them all. So 
um, for a group of people that are at the same level as you, you get the um, WhatsApp group. For accountability, uh, you get all the accountability check-ins if you're so you don't fall behind on your studying and not fit in enough study time. And on top of that, you get all the guidance and support you need. I've helped hundreds of people prepare for their exams, so I know what you need to do to pass these exams. So I know it will be helpful for you if this if you're really serious about passing your exam. Okay, um, Justin asked, how long does it take from signing up to actually starting the program? Uh, so if you sign up today, we can have everything ready for you to go starting on Saturday. Okay, so you to get this um, special $2.99 offer, you have to join before the end of the day on Friday, um, but there are only 10 spots available, so those might be gone before Friday. Um, but yes, yeah, so anyone that joins right now, you'll be able to start, or like within the next few days, you'll be able to start on Saturday. At the earliest, we can wait till Monday. I, I create st study strategies to start on uh, Saturdays, Mondays, and Wednesdays. So you can start any of those days. Just the next day coming up to start would be on Saturdays. Okay, great question. Remember, if you have any questions about the program, I'm here to answer them right now. So there's no harm in asking a question. I'd love to work with you. So if there's anything you're wondering, um, think if you're just not sure whether the program would be a good fit for you, I'm happy to answer any of those questions right now. Um, okay, Jay says, I'm planning on taking the P exam in March. Would you be able to personalize a program for the March exam? I've been studying for a few months and I'm taking an exam this Friday, which I think I will fail. Oh no, I hate when you have that feeling of just knowing that you're probably going to fail. But yes, Jay, I can definitely help. I, I can help anyone that's preparing for an exam like from February or later. So if you're taking your exam in March, I can definitely prepare a plan for you for March. Just know that you wouldn't qualify for the pass guarantee in that situation since you do have to be in the program for at least 14 weeks. But if you'd rather, we could go for May and then you would qualify for the pass guarantee. Hope that answers your question. If there's any others, don't feel, don't be afraid to ask. I, I, like I said, I'm here now to answer any of your questions and there's no harm in asking. Um, just if you're not sure, I'd love to answer your questions. Uh, and go have a look at the link right now while we're here on this call. Uh, there's a lot of details about the program in there. And if, if you're confused about anything, just feel free to ask right now. I'm going to answer all questions about the study strategy program. Um, Renee asks, how do we access the resource guides for exam P and FM that you mentioned at the beginning? I'm going to be giving those out in just about two minutes, okay, Renee? Um, Okay, I don't see any more questions. I will stick around for five more minutes. Um, I will put a link in the study or in the chat to those resource guides right now. So the first one is going to be the resource guide for exam P. And then I will put the exam FM1 in there for you as well. This is just for people that are joining live and staying till the end. So I won't be handing these out in an email or anything afterwards. You have to go download them right now. And there's the FM resource guide. Okay. Um, so Maggie has a question. How can we schedule a plan to work with working full time Monday to Friday, eight to six? Would you recommend more than 14 weeks to study? Uh, so you're working full time Monday to Friday, eight to six. So Maggie, that really depends on how much time you're going to have to prepare after work. I'm not sure whether you have a long commute or maybe you have a family that you have to look after when you get home from work or something like that. So if you're going to have about three to four hours to study per day, most days of the week, so if you're going to have three to four hours, six days of the week, then 
you would probably be okay with 14 weeks, but I always recommend 14 weeks being like the very minimum. So typically I would recommend that you actually give yourself 16, 17 or 18 weeks even just to make sure that you really have enough time so you're not feeling rushed at all. So if there are certain topics that you want to spend a little more time on, you have that flexibility in your schedule to be able to do that. Um, and also, if there are certain events that come up that maybe cause you to not be able to study for a few days in a row or something, it also gives you a, a bit of flexibility that way. So 14 weeks is a minimum, um, and that re would require you probably studying for about three to four hours per day, most days of the week. Um, but yeah, so like I said, sorry, I'm, I'm rambling here, but I would recommend starting a bit earlier if you can. The more time you can give yourself, the better. Um, okay, Maria says, I have been studying for exam FM since November of 2019. My exam is on February 24th. I am wondering how much it would be to have one month study plan. So Maria, you can actually join the study strategy program for just one month. It's $85. Um, I will put, hmm. so right now in the chat, oh, I can, no, I can't type there. Okay, in the chat right now, I'll put where you can go to just get one month in the study strategy program, okay? Actually, hmm. okay, there. I just put that in the chat for you, Maria, where you can go to just get one month in the program for your February exam. No problem. Okay, um, so. Like I said, if you have any more questions about the study strategy program, I am going to be here for a couple more minutes to answer questions. There's no harm in asking questions. I want to make sure that you have a chance to look through um, everything that I have there on the information page. And if you have questions about anything, just go ahead and ask. I'm here right now to answer your questions. Um, I will answer a few other ones that aren't specifically related to the study strategy program. Um, Nicole asks, if you failed more than once, do you suggest restarting from the beginning of the manual again or focusing on your weak areas? Um, so Nicole, if you have a fairly good understanding of most of the concepts, if you feel that you have a fairly good understanding of most of them, then you probably just need to focus on your weaker areas. But if you feel like you've kind of rushed through the material or maybe don't have a very good understanding of the of most of the topics in depth, then I would suggest starting from the very beginning. That's what I would do for people that join the study strategy program after failing a few times. I'd usually have them start from the very beginning because that ensures that they're, they're first of all, um, kind of remembering everything that they've already learned, but also it ensures that they're really getting a good grasp on the concepts even if it's for going through it a second or third time, that you'll always learn more once you read through the material two or three times. So I would suggest going through the material again if you're not feeling very confident with the majority of the topics. But if you are, then just focus on your weaker areas. Okay, could you briefly explain the grading scale for exams P and FM? Okay, so um, exam P and FM are scored on a scale from zero to 10, and you have to score a six in order to pass. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to get 60% of the questions right. Actually, you have to get about 71% of the study materials right, or sorry, of the 71% of the questions right to pass. Um, 
there are pilot questions on the exams, which are questions that the SOA puts into the exam that don't actually count towards your grade. So some of the questions on your exam actually don't count. So that um, puts in a little bit of variance. Uh, so you may need to get a few more than 70% of the questions right in order to pass if um, some of those questions are pilot questions. Um, it can get a little bit confusing. Actually, I have a whole, um, blog post written out about this. So if you just Google something like, how is exam P scored? I think you'll find Etched Actuarial's website come up at the top probably, um, and that will explain it to you more in depth how the exams are scored and marked. Um, okay, Hazi asks, if I want to give both exam P and FM one after the other, does your four month study strategy apply for preparing for both of the exams? So I usually never recommend studying for both exams at the same time. It doesn't sound like that's what you want to do. Um, but yes, the four month study strategy program can be used for exam P to start, and then we can use your remaining months uh, to study for exam FM if you'd like to. Um, if you usually I recommend at least 14 weeks in the program. So if you decide to take exam P first and take that exam in May, then there really won't be much more time after that in order in your four months to start on exam FM. But we can definitely, like if you want to take exam FM with me as well, I would be happy to offer the 299 for four months for you as well, since you would be a past member at that point. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Huzzy, if it doesn't, then feel free to just ask another question to clarify that. Okay, uh, Christina has a question. If I were to purchase the one month subscription for four months consecutively, would I still qualify for the $225 pass guarantee? Christina, the answer is yes. So if you are planning to take your exam in May or later, you can join one month at a time and pay $85 per month and you'll still qualify for the pass guarantee. Great question, I should have mentioned that one earlier. Um, but just so you know, by joining in the four month membership, you're actually saving about 12% than if you, had, if you pay month to month. So 299 versus $85 per month, you can weigh that out and you're actually saving about 12% or $40 um, by joining the four month membership rather than going month to month. Um, Ms. Duncan asks, where can I purchase the study manual? So study manuals, uh, I recommend purchasing study manuals through either actexmadriver.com or the actuarialbookstore.com. I would not purchase study material or study manuals anywhere else. Unless, of course, if you're going to go with the Coaching Actuaries bundle, you can purchase it directly on the Coaching Actuaries website. Or TIA, the Infinite Actuary, is another um, study manual or material that I recommend. You can purchase it directly on their website. But if you're planning to get Actex or the ASM manual, I definitely recommend getting it on actexmadriver.com or the actuarialbookstore.com. Those are the only two sites I would trust to get study materials uh, for Actex or ASM. Okay. Okay, so it is 8.30 now. I have loved talking with you guys. Uh, if you have any questions at all, I am hoping to do more of these trainings in the future, so be sure to join them. Um, if you have questions about the study strategy program at all, you can always ask um, right at the bottom of the page that I gave you. I will actually put that in one more time for you. Um, okay, so if you missed it, this is where you go to get that four month membership offer for $40 off or 12% off. Um, I forget what I was going to say about that. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, so I know what I was going to say. At the bottom of that page, if you have any questions at all about the study strategy program, there's a link that you can go to that 
uh, I think it says ask your question here or something like that. I always answer questions about the study strategy program as soon as I can and I'll get back with back to you through email with an answer. So if there are any questions you didn't get a chance to ask about the study strategy program, you can ask them there. Okay, it's been so nice talking to you guys and I hope this was helpful. I will see you in the next training or in the study strategy program, hopefully. Okay, bye.